So uh, my name is uh, Gordon Lindsay. Um, basically, my background is I obtained an undergraduate degree in um, electronics and electrical engineer with honours from the University of Glasgow in 2007. Uh, from there, I graduated and I joined a robotics company, and I spent two years there uh, building up experience in electronics and uh, control system design. Uh, 2009, I joined NEL, uh, the company I'm now uh, working for, and I joined as a lead uh, control systems and software developer for the company. And my role at NEL now is basically um, still in that capacity. I'm, uh, I design control systems, I design software for our test facilities, and the, basically the electronic hardware that we use to uh, do a lot of research and uh, calibration projects with, with the company. Uh, I'm a chartered engineer. I obtained my chartership with NEL uh, last year. And basically, from that point, after getting my chartership, the next logical step was when this programme became available to uh, go for this, as you're encouraged, basically, as a chartered engineer, to um, continue to improve professionally and to improve your skills and build upon your engineering skills. So my project is looking at a particular flow measurement technology called uh, Coriolis flow meters, uh, specifically how they are affected by their ambient conditions. Um, basically, the oil and gas industry relies heavily on accurate measurements um, and um, repeatable measurement. Uh, potential for um, ambient conditions or environmental conditions to affect the quality of the data is something that the industry is concerned about, and as such, my research is focusing on trying to target which ambient conditions can uh, cause uh, incorrect data to be produced. Uh, well, actually, as I said, it's, um, since I've now obtained my chartered engineer status, the, the logical next step is to, if I want to continue to improve professionally and also um, build upon my technical skills, um, when the company offered this program, I thought it would be quite a good thing to do and, and quite an enjoyable thing to do, so that's, that's the main reason, really. Yeah, it was, um, it was fine. It was um, basically we had to go through a, an interview stage, we had to pre present initial ideas that could be viable research topics. So I looked at my background, um, what, I'm, what I'm interested in, what I can currently bring to the company, and how I could um, make a project which could uh, last four years. Um, so presented them as part of an interview stage, and it was oh, it was it was a, a fairly pleasant stage uh, process overall. There was nothing particularly taxing about it. Um, hopefully, um, they sponsor me because they know, um, just due to my, yeah, I've worked for the company for seven years now, and they, they know that I can deliver on projects, they know that um, I'm capable of doing the things I've claimed that my projects can, can bring to the company. So I think that's one of the, the reasons, basically, they've got confidence in my abilities as an engineer. Um, well, um, our facility, our NEL has, um, a major uh, flow facility. Um, it's quite a, a big facility. So they basically, we have to share that facility with customers, researchers, and now this engineering doctorate um, um, program. So th what they've done is they've tried to accommodate us by providing us with um, additional time out of our work. So we get, um, a, on average, a day a week, if possible, to work on this project. And as such, that day a week hopefully can translate into facility time if we can plan and manage it um, with our uh, company and other commercial projects. So they've, they've committed a significant amount of time to allow us to run our projects on these facilities, which actually are worth quite a lot of money um, to, to the company. Personal time, uh, possibly, it's, it, it varies week to week um, because of uh, commercial um, pressures of the job. And it, it, the average, maybe maybe 15 hours a week, and that's that's including your... Um, time at home, um, extra, staying late at work. In particular, I use one of the facilities, um, the NEL, which is heavily used. Therefore, it's a timetable, and if it's booked out fully throughout the week, I might have to come in at the weekend and run a test then, or I might have to stay on after my seven hours, um, you know, my nine to five is finished, and continue to, to work on to maybe 10 at night uh, running some tests. So it, it varies, basically. Yeah, and so one positive outcome has uh, been uh, for the company itself, NEL, and the facility I've chosen to use for my particular research um, had to be upgraded to accommodate the kind of tests that I'm required to do. Um, so as such, um, they've, they've now got a, a more efficient facility which is capable of making um, 
um, more traceable measurements. Um, so that's, that's one, one, one positive anyway. <laughs> It's been very good so far. I mean, and because we are uh, working uh, remotely, we work in um, Scotland and obviously Coventry's in Coventry. So basically, um, our supervisors um, arrange Skype meetings with us whenever convenient, um, whether that's in work or even um, after, after hours. It's quite flexible that way. So generally, we try and have a, a Skype meeting with our supervisor uh, every two weeks just to give them a bit of a catch up, let them know how we're getting on. And of course, they're, I've emailed multiple times just at any point I've, when I've got questions and they're usually quite good at getting back to us and responding. Um, I have three named supervisors, all with different backgrounds, so and that's also very helpful because you get different perspectives on different aspects of the research. I would recommend it. I think it's a, a great um, course if you want to improve your, your skills, um, both professionally and technically. Um, it's a great experience overall and um, yeah, <laughs> yes basically. <laughs>